Hello and welcome to my channel. For a long time in the comments you were telling me that I should try hydraulics system on my channel. And today I'm not going to try them. But today I'm going to compare hydraulic actuators with electric actuators. Kind of compare. And I'm going to do this from theoretical point of view. And as I know nothing, I'm going to use uh, mainly two scientific papers for this. So let's get started. I think it's super interesting to compare hydraulics with electrical systems because uh, if we look at the present robots, we see some kind of uh, trends. And one of the trends is that most of the robots, especially if we simplify our task and take only humanoid-like robots, most of these humanoid-like robots which are in development now, they are electric ones. Like Digit Robot, like Cyber One from Xiaomi or Tesla Bot. There is no many hydraulics robots. But the one uh, which exists, humanoid hydraulic robot Atlas from Boston Dynamics, is probably the most advanced robot and probably most of the people know this one and not the electric ones. So from one side, the electric ones, they're more used. And from another side, the hydraulic one seems like it can do much more than electric ones because it seems like it's more agile, it's faster, it's more powerful. So from this point of view, it seems like hydraulics is better. But from another side, if we look at the robot dogs, most of them are electric, some of them are hydraulic. And the interesting thing is that Boston Dynamics, the people who is behind Hydraulic Atlas, they have made several robot dogs with a hydraulic system but for the production, for the Spot Mini, they decided to use the electrical system and not hydraulics. So, why? Let's try to figure out this. So, as I told you, I mainly looked at two papers. This is the first one, electric rod actuators with hydraulic cylinders, a comparison of the pros and cons of each technology. And this is a paper from the Tolomati company. And it's a company which supplies linear actuators, both electric and hydraulic. This is the first paper. The second paper is this one. It's uh, a little bit more complicated, but at the same time, it's a little bit more interesting. So characteristics of hydraulic and electric servo motors. So first of all, let's look at this one. And here there are several interesting figures. For the robotics, it's very important to be able precisely control your actuators. And in this case, uh, the electric actuators, it's way easier to control than hydraulic. And this is, you can see over here. So this is kind of schematic. So this is not super scientific, but still. So this is electric. And as you can see, the electric one is the best for the position, velocity, and acceleration, deceleration control. The electro-hydraulic or servo-hydraulic is uh, quite good in this, but not a perfect. And the standard hydraulic system with the open loop, it's a really bad in the control. But for the force control, the hydraulic systems are quite good. But still electric systems, they are also good. But here the authors of this paper, they decided that hydraulic systems, they are a little bit easier to control in force than electric one. I think this is questionable, discussable, but yeah. Anyway, both of them are good to control in the force. And the hydraulic systems are not really perfect from the point of view of the heating, meaning that when there is a lot of loads, the oil can heat up and it's not a problem for oil to be heated, but it's a problem for joints. The hot oil can damage the joints. So here they are saying that uh, 82 degrees can already damage the most uh, seal compounds. And also from the point of view of cold, if you are using the actuators at the cold temperature, the electric actuators, uh, they are way better in these terms because of the fluid thickening with the colder temperature, the oil becomes uh, less liquid and uh, the system becomes less efficient. Also electrical systems, they require almost no uh, maintenance and the hydraulic systems, they require more maintenance. I think here they put it in the medium because uh, they are considering electrohydraulic system when there is a closed loops like this, uh, oil is not uh, much exposed to the air and it requires less uh, maintenance. So electrohydraulic actuators, it's a kind of small package which contains everything like uh, motor, pump, uh, the uh, hydraulic piston, the valves, and all this in a small, easy to use package. The efficiency, I think this one is important. The electric actuator efficiency, typical efficiency 75 to 80%, quite high. 
and for the uh, hydraulic one is 40 to 55 percent so it's almost two times lower this means that for the mobile robots probably electric systems are better than the hydraulic ones and also from the point of view of environmental risk the electric one has a low risk and the hydraulic one has quite high risk because the possibility of the leakage of oil so these were the key points of this paper as you can see this is kind of educational video so that's why I think you are going to appreciate the sponsor of this video brilliant.org this is an interactive tool which allows you to learn a new concepts in mathematics physics science computer science machine learning and stuff like this and also it's a great tool to remind you what you already knew but uh, did not use uh, for some time and probably forget like it happens uh, with me quite often and the third point which I think the brilliant is perfect is to train your brain we all know that in the age of AI when uh, the technology becomes more and more smarter we also should try to keep up with the technology with the computers and this is another point why we should train our brain and keep it sharp there you can learn a lot of new concepts from the basic to advanced Brilliant has 1000 courses and the new lectures they are added on a monthly basis so I think almost everyone will find something interesting there to try everything Brilliant has to offer free for a full 30 days visit brilliance.org scientific or click on the link in the description to this video the first 200 of you will get 20% off from Brilliant's annual premium subscription now let's look at the second paper characteristics of hydraulic and electrical servo motors they did quite interesting analysis where they took a lot of electric and hydraulic motors not the actuators but just motors and they take different uh, types like AC AC direct brushless DC brush DC so on my channel we quite often use brushless DC because uh, they are probably the most advanced from the electric motors and from the hydraulic they used the swash plate type axial piston bent axis type axial piston crank type radial piston and multi-stroke type radial piston I have no idea what is this but let's find out so let's look at the Wikipedia page axial piston pump so this is going to cover swash plate type axial piston and bent axis type axial piston and there is this really great animation so first of all this picture swash plate type axial piston is basically this kind of motor over here there is intake the high pressure is going here and here is exhaust and this part can rotate this part has a lot of pistons and over here there is non-rotating swash plate so this swash plate which is positioned at some angle and because it's positioned at some angle when the piston is over here it's going up when it rotates the piston over here it's going down when the high pressure is here this high pressure here it's going to push the piston and like this it's this piston is going to force this part to rotate and so this is basically how it works uh, you can see this over here so the the oil pressure goes here it pushes the piston these pistons they push this part to rotate and over here the pistons goes up and the oil coming out and the bent axis type axial piston is the same idea it's over here from this picture it's kind of difficult to understand how it works bent axis type axial piston I think this one is a good image this is the output shaft these are the pistons and again there is the same type of the inlet and outlet so this is a piston and this is a chamber this is the output and so like this these pistons they rotate with the output shaft and so when the oil is coming in it pushes the pistons and afterwards from the other side there is exhaust so it's basically the same thing as with this swash plate but instead of inclining the this plate the swash plate what they did here they like bent the entire actuator but the idea is uh, exactly the same I think the advantage of this one that it has probably less friction with compared with a swash plate another hydraulic system is a crank type radial piston this I'm not going to talk about it because I have not found exactly what it is but I found what is multi-stroke type radial piston you can see it over here this is from this company this is a motor and this is a cross section of this motor so there is one cross section here and another cross section over here 
This is the output shaft and this output shaft is rigidly connected to this part. So it rigidly connected to this part which rotates and this part has a lot of small pistons. At the end of each piston there is this kind of cylinder which pushes on the wall of this motor. There is this shape which seems like a shape of the, in the cycloidal actuator. So if you apply at some of these pistons the pressure and don't apply at another pre pressure it will force so these pistons they will push on the wall and this will force the entire output shaft to rotate. Over here there is the inlet and outlets and this inlet and outlets they are not rotating so this part are not rotating and this inlet and outlets they put the oil they put or take the oil to these holes which are on this uh, wheel and so when, when the appropriate hole is aligned with the inlet and outlet the oil comes in it pushes uh, to the to this uh, small piston and it works like this. I think you can understand this from this image from this uh, YouTube channel. So there is an uh, inlet over here, over here, the outlet they don't show. But so basically this part does not rotate, but this part it rotates. So this means that at some points the inlet uh, aligns with some pistons, at another point it aligns with another piston. So like this there is a high pressure at exact moment when it's needed. So now we know at least some of the hydraulic motors. I hope that you know what are these motors. At least I think most of you knows what is brushless DC and what is brushed DC. I would like to start with these schematics. And these schematics they compare the electrical drive system with hydraulic drive system and what components do you need for each of them. And for the electric drive system I think you all know that you would need the motor, you would probably need the gearbox and this gearbox is going to move your load. The motor is powered by the wires, in the wires there is a current because of the driver and there is a driver, power supply and controller. So controller tells the driver where to go, the driver takes the power from the power supply and it put this power in the motor. With the hydraulic drive system it's a little bit different. First of all the motor is uh, smaller here than this one, I think that the just want to show that uh, with the smaller motor you can have the higher torque than with the electrical one. The motor is quite often connected directly to the load without any gearboxes over here because the torque of this motor usually is quite high. And here you have a lot of different stuff like a power supply driver which drive the motor. This motor it rotates the pump, the pump usually has the reservoir, there is some valves and these valves are controlled by controller. So basically if you compare these two systems, here you have controller driver power supply and here you have power supply driver controller. So these parts they are quite similar, they are not the same but they are quite similar. And in addition for the hydraulic system you need motor, pump, reservoir and valves. In this paper they compare only motors. But still it's quite interesting, let me show you. So this is kind of a historical chart, so there is a, a year of the technology here and the power density. So the power normalized by the weight of the motor and the green one is hydraulic motors and the reddish one is electric motors. And you can see that hydraulic motors they are always more power dense than electric motors and the difference between hydraulic motors and electric motors becomes smaller and smaller. And I think the most interesting progress was over here because of the brushless DC motors. And why these brushless DC motors they appeared over here? Because of the magnets. So this is again the year, the power density. Here there is only electric motors. So basically this is the same part as over here. But also they put here the different magnets. And the neodymium magnets they appeared over here. And thanks to these neodymium magnets it was possible to make lightweight and powerful brushless DC motors. And this is a hydraulic motor's power density and as you can see with the time what is changed the rated pressure of these uh, motors it's increased from 10 megapascal to up to 40 megapascal. And by the way the interesting things here is that if you look which one is the most power dense is the most old technology over here the bent axis type axial piston. And what is interesting for me is also this graph. This is a torque of the motor without any gearbox as a function of mass. 
for the electrical motors and for the hydraulic motors. As you can see, the hydraulic motors, they are more powerful than electrical one and they are more powerful around 10 times. This is a log scale. But this is again without uh, gearboxes. So with the gearboxes, you can increase this. So if you have like super light gearboxes 10 to 1, in this case, this curve will go over here and will be almost like some of the hydraulic systems. Not the best one, but some of them. And the most torquey technology is multi-stroke radial piston. This is also interesting graph here. They compare the torque with the speed. So the hydraulic motors, they have the high torque, but they are not really fast. But at the same time, that's why they can use these motors without any gearbox and connect it directly to the payload. This is the power as a function of mass. And as you can see, the hydraulics is higher. Here's a summary of this comparison, hydraulics motor versus electric motors. Usually the electric motors are faster than hydraulic ones, but the hydraulic ones have higher torque than the electric ones. Hydraulic ones have higher power density. And here the Q is the motor responsiveness. And the hydraulic ones, they also win here with respect to the motor responsiveness. And here there are advantages of the electric motor and the hydraulic motor. The electric motors, high efficiency, high RPM, high control capabilities, low maintenance. The hydraulic motors, high power to weight ratio, high torque to weight ratio, and high responsiveness. But this is just the motors. If we look at the electric drive system and hydraulic drive system, so everything together, not just the motors, but uh, everything together, like gearboxes, uh, control system, etc., etc. In this case, the electric drive system with respect to the hydraulic drive system, it has additionally the gearbox module. The hydraulic drive system does not have this gearbox, but instead it has the additional motor, pump and reservoir and also the control valves. Usually you need one motor, one pump and one reservoir for several hydraulic motors. And for each hydraulic motors, you need uh, their own uh, set of the valves. As it happens quite often, there is no magic solution. And it's difficult to say which of these uh, systems are better, the electric one, electric drive, or hydraulic drive. Just to remind you from this graph, we saw that hydraulic drive systems they are not developing as fast as electric one. So probably in the future, the electric one will have the same kind of power to weight ratio and the same kind of torque to weight ratio. And at the same time, they will keep the be simple and easy to use. And for the moment, I would like to ask you your opinion. What do you think what is better, electric drive system or hydraulic one? Thank you for watching this video till the end. Huge thank you to people who support me via Patreon and via YouTube channel membership. Here are their names. Thank you. As usual, stay safe, good luck with your projects and see you next time. And I hope one day we are going to try the hydraulic drive system.